Namaste, welcome everyone. My name is Cassandra and I'm gonna take you through this intermediate full body flow. The emphasis of this class is on really deeply lengthening and stretching our hamstrings and we're also playing with some balancing poses. So a lot of challenges in this one, but it should be really fun. I hope you guys enjoy it. No props are required. Let's begin lying down on our backs, Supta Baddha Konasana, reclined butterfly pose. And join the soles of your feet together, knees apart. And you might let your hands rest over your belly, or you can extend your arms up overhead. Whatever feels the best to you here, try to keep the floating ribs pressing down as you relax your knees and your thighs. Take some cleansing breaths as you ground into your body. And you might choose to set an intention for your practice. This can be as simple as answering the question, what brings me to my mat today? So what is it that you're looking to cultivate, to work on, or maybe to let go of? It might just be one word that comes to you. It could be a feeling or an affirmation or mantra. The setting intentions is one of the best ways that we can really make our practices more meaningful for us. So use the next five to eight breaths here to really set one and to find your breath flow. Take one more full belly breath here. And let's slide the arms back down. If you had them up overhead, bring your knees back towards one another. Ardha Ananda Balasana, our half happy baby pose. Start by bringing your right knee towards your right shoulder and maybe add on by holding on to the big toe keeping your elbow to the inside of that knee as you drag it down. And you can let your left leg kind of flop over to the side, providing a nice counterweight. Start to check in with the hamstrings and your hips. Soften your shoulders into the mat. And keep the hold of your big toe and slide your left leg forward and straight. So getting deeper now into your hip flexors and you might feel it more into your right hip as well. And you might choose to stay here or you can go a little bit further into our hand to big toe pose by straightening the right leg. Supta Parangustasana. And if holding on to the toe here is just too much at the beginning of this class, you can always just bring your hands further down the leg, holding on to the back of the calf or the back of your hamstrings. And keeping a bit of a bend in the knee is perfectly fine here. We'll be working on different variations of this pose, getting into our hamstrings later on. And let's go ahead and open this out to the side. Really push down into your left hip so you're not completely rolling over to the right. Feel the engagement through that right leg as you push into your heel, as if you were pushing your foot against the wall. 
So you do need to squeeze into your obliques here to hold yourself centered. Into our reclined pigeon pose, cross your right ankle over the top of your left knee and pull it in. One more big breath and let's release. Go ahead and lift both legs up to the sky before we go and do this on the other side. And for some of you, if the tailbone feels uncomfortable here, you can bring your hands to support underneath your sacrum. Point and reach through your toes, draw your lower belly in, roll your shoulders down and back. And we're just gonna lower the right leg to hover a few inches off the floor. As you inhale, lift it up without swinging and then exhale, lower the left leg down to hover. So starting to wake up the core, lift it back. We're gonna do once more on each side. Not too intense, just finding that first connection through the abdominals. Last one, left leg comes down to hover, reach and lengthen, lift it back up. And this time, drop the right leg down to the floor and see if you can lift head and shoulders off the mat. Lengthen out, stay lifted as you bring your right leg up to join the left. Exhale, left leg hovers down. Bring it back up once more on each side. Right leg down, right leg up. Last one, left leg down and left leg up. Release, pull your knees in towards your belly. Half happy baby pose on the second side. Ardha Ananda Balasana, hold on to your left foot and let your right knee and thigh kind of flop open a little bit here. See if you can drag that thigh down towards the mat, shrug your shoulders away from your ears, find your breath rhythm. Keep the weight in your hips and pelvis evenly distributed. Let's straighten our right leg to intensify this a little more. And you might hold as you are or reclined hand to big toe, straightening that left leg. So for me, left hamstrings are always a lot tighter. If it doesn't work to hold onto the big toe, you can always just reach down and hold lower down the leg. We're not curling or lifting off the floor. And let's open it out to the side. Feel your right rib cage kind of contract a little bit. You're pressing that right rib down and you're squeezing through the right obliques in order to push your right hip into the floor so that you're not rolling over. One more big breath as you press into your left heel. Reclined pigeon, cross your left ankle over the top of your right knee as you pull it through. One last big squeeze and go ahead and release. Once more, let's reach our legs up towards the ceiling and you might wanna bring your palms to support underneath your sacrum. Roll the shoulders back and this time we're gonna keep our upper body grounded to the mat. If it's appropriate, we're going to lower both legs down. Now they don't need to go very far and then you lift back up. What we want to avoid is the legs lowering and the low back popping off of the mat. Keep your lower back pressing into the floor and just take three more to whatever depth is the best to you. Inhale to lift back up. Exhale to drop the legs down, reach through your toes. Inhale, squeeze and lift. Last one. Inhale to lift and release. Let's make our way up 
tabletop pose onto hands and knees, palms underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. Cat and cow, as you inhale, drop your belly, lift your gaze, and round and contract. As you reverse this motion, keep going in and out, following your breath, connecting to your intention. Last one here, exhale. Coming back to neutral, walk your hands out in front of you, tuck the toes under, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Feet are about hip width distance apart, paddle out the feet. Think of lengthening and reaching your tailbone up to the sky, keeping your arms strong and engaged. Let's extend our right leg up. Bend your right knee, open up your hip, and see if you can come up onto your left fingertips. Keep the hand where it is, just come up on those fingertips. And ground that left palm back down. We're gonna step that right foot forward. We're setting up for warrior one. Vira Bhadrasana one, back foot at about a 45 degree angle. Your ankle is underneath your knee as you lift on up here. Now keep your shoulders and your hips facing forward and see if you can go ahead and lift your right heel off the floor as you push into the arch of your foot. Keep pressing and sinking your hips down. Let's bring our hands together at the front of the heart. Carefully place your heel down to the mat. Step to Utkatasana, chair pose. Big toes together, heels apart. And now same thing, let's see if you can lift both heels off the mat this time, hugging the inner ankles towards one another. Squeeze it in. Your heels can come down, fold forward, Uttanasana. Find your halfway lift. And we're just going to step that left leg all the way back, coming into our low lunge on Janiyasana. Keep your right ankle under your knee, pressing and lift. Lengthen your tailbone down, draw your lower belly in. From here, start to reach your arms and your hands back behind you. If it's accessible, you're going to curl and lift and see if you can reach back to grab a hold of your left ankle as you pull that in. So we're not really sinking our hips forward and down here. I'm trying to keep my hips stacked over my left knee. But roll the shoulders back, squeezing your shoulder blades behind you. And carefully release. Let's start to send and shift our hips back all the way until you can sit down. And you might need to wiggle just to bring that left foot out in front of you. As you inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Getting deeper into our right hamstrings. Lengthening out of our lower back. And as you curl up, let's bend into our right knee, grab a hold of your big toe with your two piece fingers, and we're going to lift and extend that leg up. If you're able to reach your other hand as well for support, you might be able to wrap both hands around the sole of the foot, press your shoulders down and away from your ears, push into your right heel. Crossing at the ankles. Let's find our plank pose. Step the feet back. Plank with your feet hip width distance apart. Roll to the outer edges of both heels. Lean on your right hand, Vashistasana side plank. Reach your left arm up as high as it can go. And let's circle that arm down. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. So you're welcome to take a flow here. I'm not taking any vinyasas today just because I slept a little weird and it's not working for my back. But otherwise you're welcome to go from your plank pose to chaturanga, upward dog. We all meet back, downward facing dog. 
Now let's go ahead and reach our left leg up to the sky. Bend your left knee, open up your hip, and maybe come up onto your right fingertips. So just working on our weight distribution here. Plant your right hand down, Virabhadrasana 1, step your left foot forward in between your palms, back foot at about a 45 degree angle, and lift on up. So making sure we're not over swaying into our low back here. Tuck the tailbone under, draw the lower belly in, and then lift up nice and tall. Once you're feeling balanced, you're going to add that heel lift as you push into the ball of that left foot, really pressing into your arch. This is great for those of you who have flat feet. And try to push as much into your big toe as into your little toe. We don't want our ankle to be kind of swaying side to side. We're pushing straight forward. And bring that heel down. Hands at your heart, Utkatasana chair pose. Step to the top of the mat, hug everything in towards the midline and then both heels will lift off the floor. Almost as if you want to magnetize both heels towards one another. Trying to lift the heels directly over the balls of the feet. And let's bring our heels down, Uttanasana, forward fold. Halfway lift. And step your right foot all the way back. Right knee comes down on Janiasana, low lunge. And from this lunge, open up through your arms and reach them back. Feel your shoulders roll down, floating ribs draw in. And from here, can you bend that right knee to hold onto the ankle with one or both hands? So just a different way of getting into our thighs and into our quads. Keep lengthening your tailbone down, reaching the crown of your head up. Very carefully release the hold of that back foot. We're going to straighten that front leg so we can come to take a seat and bring your right heel out in front of you just so your right foot can come to the inside of that left thigh. Lengthen out and then fold. Relax any tension from your jaw, from your chest, from your shoulders. And let's start to roll back up, bend into your left knee, grab a hold of your big toe with your two piece fingers lifting up. If you'd like to go further, you're going to also wrap your right hand around the sole of the foot. Maybe both hands interlace as you lift. Notice what, again what your foot is doing. Is it rolling to the inner or outer ankle? Push firmly through all four corners. Shoulders down and away from your ears, lift up even taller. And we release, coming into plank pose, setting ourselves up for side plank, Vashistasana to the left. Drop both heels to the left, lean on your left hand, reach your right arm up to the sky. Really press your feet into the floor to lift your hips up even higher. Reach your right arm up overhead as you circle it down, lift your hips up and back. Either hold in your down dog or take your flow once more, whatever feels the best to you here. All right, let's reach our right leg up towards the sky. Bend your knee and open up your hip. Option one, you're just going to lift onto your left fingertips. Otherwise, see if you can start to send that hand back and maybe you float it up in order to hold onto your right foot. Keep your gaze steady. One more breath here. And let's bring our left hand back. And you're gonna step that right foot forward in between the palms, Virabhadrasana two, warrior two. 
and we're just using this to transition trikonasana triangle pose straighten your front leg extend forward and then down you're trying to roll your left shoulder back roll your left hip back also and coming all the way up hands at your heart step forward to the top of the mat so we're going to come into that standing variation of hand to big toe left hand to your hip lean on your left leg and see if you can grab a hold of your big toe with your two right peace fingers and you might choose to stay here or you can start extending your leg forward utita hasta parangustasana this is a challenging pose Don't worry if the legs are not totally straight. This is very normal. Try to lift up taller. And we're gonna open it out to the side. You might want to open your left arm out to the side as well as a little counterbalance. Keep reaching and pushing into your heel. And we're coming from here into our dancer's pose, Natarajasana. Bend into your right knee. You're gonna hold on to the back inside edge of your right foot. Keep your thighs hip width distance apart as you press and reach it up. Come all the way up to Dasana Mountain Pose. Let it go. Take your flow. Inhale, arms rise. Fold forward. Halfway lift. And either take your vinyasa. I'm skipping it again. Just going to my downward facing dog. <sighs> Setting ourselves up for the second side. Reach your left leg up to the sky. Bend your knee. Open up your hip. And come up onto your right fingertips. Maybe you hang out here or you send your right hand back, maybe lifting it up, searching for that left foot. Adding your bind here in this two-legged down dog. And let's release Virabhadrasana 2 just to transition. We're coming from here into our triangle pose. Straighten that front leg, lean forward and down. One shoulder stacks over the other. Push into your feet, lift up. Hands at the heart, we're stepping to the top of the mat. Right hand to your hip, really stand tall and firm on that right leg. We're gonna bend and catch a hold of the big toe and start to straighten it forward. Open it out to the side, maybe reach your right arm out as a counterweight. into our dancer's pose hold on to the inside edge of that left foot and start to kick the foot into the hand leaning a little bit forward as the leg lifts coming up tadasana mountain pose into your flow inhale Hold down. Halfway lift. Either into your flow or downward facing dog. We all meet here. And let's find our pigeon pose. Right leg rises. And bring that right knee behind your wrist. Stretch that leg back behind you and fold on down. 
slowing down our breath and our heart rate. <sighs> Take five more breaths here. And start to lift back up. Before we go into our down dog, we're actually gonna transition into our deer pose from here. So you kind of need to shift your hips in a way where you're aligning your right hip behind your right knee, and then you're bringing your left knee in line with your left hip. Think of rolling that left hip down as you start to walk your hands back. Any amount that feels good to you here. I'm just gonna lay all the way down. You really don't need to go this far. You can stay up on your hands or onto your forearms. About five to eight breaths here. If you were really low, sometimes it's easier just to kind of roll onto your right shoulder and then push yourself up. And we're gonna switch sides. So cross at your ankles, downward dog. Really stretch it all out here, paddling through your feet. Let's reach our left leg up. Bring your left knee behind your wrist. Extend your right leg back behind you. Square off your pelvis here and then fold it down. should start to feel the effects from your practice. Just notice where the sensations are present within you. Maybe remind yourself of your intention for this class. Start lifting yourself up. We're transitioning to deer pose on the other side. So align your left knee, or sorry, your left hip behind your left knee. And your right knee and your right hip should also be aligned. Start to push and roll that right hip down. Maybe just walking, staying up here. You might come down onto your forearms, or you might be comfortable lowering all the way down. We're trying to keep that right knee kind of pressing down into the floor. We don't want it to lift off the mat too much. If it's lifting up really high, it means that you've lowered too far into the pose.
Take another big breath deep down into your belly. And if you are all the way down, you can roll onto your left shoulder and start to lift up. And it might feel good for you to transition back into downward dog one last time. You don't need to, you can also just stay seated. We're going to be lowering down on our backs. Just one last little small element of strength setting up for our bridge pose. This is just really good to kind of recalibrate and reset after our practice. Feet hip width distance apart. Roll your shoulders down and away from your ears. Push your feet into the floor and lift your hips up towards the sky. Hug through your inner thighs. And that same mindfulness of the feet really engage and lift through the arches. Push into all four corners of both feet. and release down inch by inch might feel good one last time to squeeze your knees and towards your belly make any movements and adjustments whatever feels intuitive for you here and we'll make our way into shavasana our final resting pose open up and take space palms facing up towards the sky closing your eyes and feeling the effects of your practice on your mind on your body on your emotions even on the flow of your breath and let yourself relax here just a few minutes. And bring some movement back into your fingers and toes. Deepen your breath. Roll through your ankles, through your wrists. Stretch your arms up overhead. And we'll roll to one side. Come up and take a seat. Hands at your heart. one last time recalling the intention that you had set for yourself closing with a chant inhale to chant breathe in Namaste. 
thank you so much for doing this intermediate flow with me. I know we had a lot of hamstring stretches and balancing poses, definitely a challenging one, but I hope that you feel energized and that you just feel really good from it, even if it was quite challenging in a lot of ways. I would love to know what your intention was. If you're willing to, please leave a comment below to share. If you would like to stay a little longer on your mat, you could follow this class up with a short meditation right here. Please subscribe if you don't already, and hopefully I'll practice again with you tomorrow. Namaste.